uh, what do you say to those clinics that advocate the test the right to crash DHT? Is DHT detrimental to longevity? What would I say to those clinics? Um, fuck it. Like, I, I, that's, that's what I'd say. Like, you know, eat, I guess each to their own, but that's my opinion. Um, I would be happy to debate anyone on this channel live with no preparation about why we shouldn't be crushing DHT. Um, it's, I guess it's a subject for argument and discussion, but I mean, anyone who understands the role of five alpha reductase, not just DHT, would understand the importance of not suppressing it, especially into the ground with something like oral dutasteride. Um, so I think that adding dutasteride to TRT not only massively increases the risk of side effects, because when you block DHT, you massively upregulate conversion to aromatase. And these, it's important that these enzymes in the body are functioning naturally and keeping themselves in homeostasis. Just like, you know, blocking DHT is not good, just like blocking estrogen is not good. We need both of them in balance. Um, and I think that guys who, and I've said this before, and you know, it's of course someone's going to make the comment that it's two bald guys talking about this, but we're not the ones who are sacrificing our health because we're insecure about how pretty our haircut is. Is that if people are knowingly going to risk sacrificing their long term health to keep their haircut, you don't need to be enabled. You need to speak to someone about that because that's a uh, very concerning indication of, of self esteem and, and where you're seeking uh, validation from. I think that's something that needs to be looked at quite quite seriously. Um, so these clinics, I mean, unfortunately clinics are going to do whatever they want and, you know, upselling multiple medications is always going to be appealing, but consider that DHT is by far the strongest androgen in your body. And if your goal is to increase androgen activity via testosterone replacement therapy, this is literally shooting yourself in the foot. But the thing that guys really need to be conscious of when it comes to post finasteride syndrome, which, you know, it falls into dutasteride as well. This is not something that we know how to fix. There are treatments for it that do work for some guys. And a lot of guys improve, but a lot of guys only get back to 80, 90%. And plenty of guys, I've met plenty of guys who are still recovering and they're optimistic, but there's not like a, a treatment that we can go, oh, if you get PFS, take this and it will fix it. This is a unknown. And this is something that you know, people, if people don't believe me on this, you can search up the Reuters article for the lawsuit against the manufacturers of this drug who knowingly uh, suppressed the information regarding the side effects that occurred in the clinical trial. They knew about PFS when they were developing the drug. They just didn't mention it because they knew it would hurt sales of the drug. They literally said that in court for the class action they lost. So, you know, guys who are still defending this medication, like, I mean, I, I don't know what to say to people. You can take whatever you want, but for, for guys who are looking at getting optimal hormone replacement therapy care and looking to improve their hormone levels, taking dutasteride or finasteride is literally the last thing that you want to do.